everybody, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I love me some big terrain. I, I like to make some big terrain sometimes. But in my opinion, the best terrain is small scatter terrain. It gets more use than anything else in my collection. Something like little pillars or jagged rocks. They're incredibly multifunctional and they're really convenient and practical to play on. You just throw some on the board and minis can walk around through them and it's great. For Idols of Torment, I've built a lot of large terrain pieces, but we're now in the final stages of developing the rules, the very, very end where we are crafting the eternal powers, which are essentially like spell effects in the game. And we were play testing one of the recent additions to that, which is called Echo Form. And essentially it's just the player manifesting a four inch or under piece of terrain, like just coming up from the ground. It got used a lot in the game. It was, it was really effective and a valuable part of the game that we're gonna keep in there. But knowing that this effect would become a permanent staple in the game, I knew I needed specific, perfect terrain pieces to use for it that, that really matched the mechanics and the aesthetic and matched with all my other stuff. So I made this little set of Echo form terrain for idols that matches all my bigger pieces. And while I was building it, you know, I didn't do anything particularly new. I instead spent my time thinking about all the little things that I just kind of naturally do to make building scatter terrain easier, more efficient. Bits. Bits are a crucial element to my scatter terrain. You can take a lump of whatever and glue it to a base and it's gonna look like crap. But if you put some plastic bits on it, well, it doesn't have to be plastic, but if you put some detailed pieces on it, that's gonna sell a concept. It's going to elevate everything. Even if only 10% of the piece has detailed bits on it, it's gonna make the rest just look better in comparison. Kind of like tricks people's brains into filling in the details. It's also a great way to make a cohesive set in a, in a specific setting or a specific style. If, if you drop bits in that are modern or futuristic, it's going to make the whole set look modern or futuristic, even if it's just on simple rock structures. You can use your collection of unpainted miniatures that just never seem to get used for anything else. Maybe you have some broken or damaged minis, leftover pieces from various model kits, both miniatures and otherwise. If you 3D print, failed 3D prints are fantastic for this. You can get old toys, uh, dollar store stuff, little decorations, decoration, knickknack, tchotchke things from the thrift store, whatever. My favorite source of bits is 3D printing them because you can get whatever you want and you can scale them to whatever size you want. You can make a whole bunch of them. Like on this set, I use all these gruesome little scatter pieces from Loot's most recent release. Hands coming up from the earth, bones, torso, skulls. It's, it's very appropriate for my game. Mostly bits are a great way to use up stuff that you might not otherwise use. And they're really satisfying to place on things. I love, I love using them. Now bases, as much as I love scatter terrain without any bases, in a lot of ways, it, it's the most effective just to have them. One, it makes them really stable. It allows you to decorate the base in a certain style, make kind of crazier shapes for me right now. With Idols of Torment, it's a mechanical thing. There's terrain rules, and those rules are affected by the base sizes, you know, whether a model's touching it or on it. So having these standardized base sizes is perfect. I love using these wood bases. You can get in a multitude of sizes. I buy a bunch of them from Dollarama. Last time I was there, I stocked up like crazy. You can also get them at places like Michael's or whatever art store you have in town or Amazon. I needed four inch rounds for this terrain set. And I, I couldn't find those at Dollarama. So I got them and some three inch ones on Amazon. And they formed the foundation for this build and it's a standard size I can use in the future to add to this set. Now, what I like about round bases versus square ones is one, they look a little bit more natural on the table. Not quite as natural as an organic shape like this, but definitely more so than a square rectangle with corners. More importantly, a circle is the shape that is the least likely to warp 
because bending a circle is really difficult, whereas bending a rectangle or corner is very easy. Circles are very strong. Longtime viewers know how much I used to hate bases on terrain. I'm completely converted, and I think you should think about converting as well if you're on the fence about it. Flat pieces of area terrain, something that is essentially just gonna be rubble, difficult terrain, very valuable, very important in games, but it doesn't give you line of sight blocking or cover like a you know larger, more vertical piece of terrain would. And you're gonna want that obviously in a lot of situations. You wanna have a bit of both. So when you wanna make something big, something tall, that has some you know verticality, you need to bulk it up with something. I always use foam. You can use any foam for this if you cover it with some sort of other you know, material, but I like using XPS foam. And in particular, I use this stuff, which is high density foam and in large thicknesses. When you have a big chunk of foam, it's easier to cut away a shape like this rather than layering things together. You can make all sorts of different shapes and sizes. This is the stuff I've been using for months. Uh, I partnered with XPS Supply, so you can grab some of this stuff in various thicknesses that are perfect for our needs. It's the stuff that is much denser than the pink or blue Fomilar or Dow that you get at like Home Depot. I'll put a link where you can grab that for yourself. The main idea here is that it's just a quick way to bulk up a build. You can slap it on a base and carve it up really easily. And because it's so easy to cut, it allows you to just kind of go free form and just experiment and make really natural shapes. When something's difficult to work with, you're more reluctant to carve it up and try different things. But foam is so easy and so forgiving that it, you know, it just lets you get loose and make interesting shapes. Like I said, th those shapes are kind of bland on their own and you need cool things like bits to decorate them. Great place to get some of those bits is from today's sponsor, Loot Studios. They have a subscription service where you can get monthly bundles of super cool themed miniatures for tabletop games that you can 3D print at home. The themes are always on point for RPG players and come with supplements to help you use them. This month's theme is ideal for a trip to the abyss or the nine hells or to use in a game like Idols of Torment. You know, just saying. I printed and painted this abomination looking guy that I just love. What's cool about loot is that it's not just minis. They also provide their files in a larger 75 millimeter scale that you can use for display painting or like I use them as big bits in terrain. Now, if you don't want to make terrain yourself, well, lately Loot has gone really hard on including a ton of printable terrain in each bundle. Essentially, you can run a huge campaign using only models provided by their sets if you wanted to. The models are all pre-supported, they print beautifully, and they are convenient to download via their website, which stores all of the stuff that you have access to from previous months where you were subscribed. I highly recommend you check them out. I'll put a link in the description where you can get more info and sign up for yourself. Thanks, Luke, for sponsoring this video. Okay, so you got, you got a base, you got a blob of foam, stuck to it and maybe some cool bits. Still looks pretty ugly. You need a way to blend that all together. And my preferred method for doing that is modeling compound. This is like the magic material. More so than any other art material, modeling compound has changed the way I think and build and, and do things since I discovered it. I use Sculptamold or Geek Gaming Scenics modeling compound interchangeably. They're essentially the same thing. They serve the same purpose. The Geek Gaming one dries a lot faster, which makes it better in my opinion, but it's a lot harder to get for me. I don't have easy access to it. Sculptamold I can buy from Amazon or my local art supply store. So. That's typically what I end up using. You can mix it up and just put it on things. It blends different pieces together really, really well. It covers bases really, really well, really organically. I love that it sticks to foam. You can put a thin layer on XPS foam and it's gonna really stick to it. It's, it's easy to apply. It's messy, but it's easy to apply. And this will create an amazing hard coating on your foam that's gonna protect it from all sorts of stuff like melting from spray paint or just general damage. It makes it nice and nice and hard. Now it can chip. My solution for that is just mixing in black paint into the compound. That way if it chips, it, it just looks gray and you don't really notice it. It dries really fast, dries hard. You can sand it and carve it after it's dry. 
and it absorbs paint really nicely. If you make terrain, small or large or boards or whatever, and you don't have some sort of modeling compound in your arsenal, you are doing yourself a great disservice. You need to get yourself some modeling compound. Seriously, it is just a magical tool. Now, now you got these amazing pieces that look great, but they need to be painted. And having simple, repeatable paint schemes is priceless, especially when you're building for a game that you wanna keep adding terrain to and you want new things to be cohesive with old things. First of all, batch prime whenever you can. Try to build as much as you can and batch prime it and batch paint it. When it comes to painting, keep it simple, stupid. Kiss, that's a thing, right? I'm not calling you stupid, but I'm just saying like, don't overcomplicate it. I like to airbrush on inks over zenithal highlight. It's just awesome. It's the fastest way to paint stuff. It always looks pretty good and, and I really enjoy doing it. Uh, I try to stick to two to three undertone colors. I found I can experiment a lot with these colors, do different ones for different pieces. As long as in the end, I use one unifying filter coat that blends everything together. And now my weapon of choice for this is raw umber ink. I can put this over any other colors and it's gonna blend it together. It's gonna make these pieces fit well with the ones I made a month ago and a year ago. This sort of cohesive painting scheme is made even more effective with a dry brush of the same color on everything. I use a fog gray craft paint and it's that another little step in just blending things together. So even if my underpaint is a little bit different, having that same color dry brush on different pieces makes them look like they're from the same universe. If you really wanna kick it up a notch, pigment powders. If you pick one or two colors of pigment powder and apply it on all of your pieces, it's really gonna blend things together made at different times. And you don't need expensive pigment powders. I just make my own using pastel crayons. Smash it up, scrape it up, and you have pigment powder. And it's awesome. That's really it. Like, uh, <laughs> cool bits, uniform pre-made bases, thick chunks of foam, sculpt the mold to cover and blend everything together, and a simple paint job that you can repeat, repeat, repeat every time you do it, but also have some fun experimenting with. I hope you found this useful. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below if you want to pick up any hobby supplies like sculpt mold Check out my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca. You can help out the channel while doing your regular hobby shopping on Amazon. If you really enjoy these videos I make and you wanna help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. Of course, be sure to check out our sponsor, Loot. They make awesome models. I love them. They're some of my favorite to paint. This guy is so cool. Happy building, happy crafting, happy gaming. I'll see y'all again next time. Cheers.